Okay, uh, namaste everyone. So this is uh, the tenth class of the ongoing series of uh, Vedic Astrology Foundations course. And uh, in the last class we had uh, started with the houses, and we had covered just one planet, that is the sun. We'll start. We'll try to cover the remaining planets today. And. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, let's start the class with uh, with the Shanti Mantra from the Katha Upanishad. Yeah. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunakatu Sahavi Dhyankara Pavahai Tejasvi Nadadhi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hi So we are we were done with the sun in the last class. So this time you know we'd be going over to the moon. Okay. So just like the sun represents the soul, the moon represents the mind. Okay. But uh, you know, it does not only represent the conscious mind, which is particularly Mercury's domain. It represents all aspects of the of the mind. Okay, including our feelings and including our emotions. Okay. So it also represents the mother, right? It also represents the comforts that you get from your mother, okay? Then it represents uh, beauty. It represents the luster on your face, the glow on your face, basically. It represents gracefulness. It represents fame. It represents, you know, happiness. <clears throat> it represents uh, vehicles, okay? It represents your sense of humor as well, all right? It represents uh, the you know the mental agility in a in an individual okay it represents all forms of liquids all right particularly water milk you know curd honey okay it also represents saline liquids all right it also represents food okay basically you know because the mother nourishes you so the moon represents food okay it also represents fruits fish okay it also represents snakes and other reptiles, all right? It uh, represents flowers. It represents, you know, the white color. It represents pearls. It represents, you know, all, uh, <clears throat> it represents uh, water bodies like lakes, okay? The water in the tanks, water in the well. It also represents uh, pilgrimage, okay? It represents pilgrimage. It represents your shyness, your modesty. Okay, it represents kindness. It also, it of course will represent love. Okay, it represents uh, wheat, white rice, sugar cane. It represents uh, the northwest direction. Okay, among the seasons, it represents the rainy season, which is known as Varsha. It also, you know, in medical astrology, it represents mental illnesses. Okay, epilepsy, ulcers, acidity. Okay, it uh, represents <clears throat> blood. Okay, it represents blood. Most people think blood is the domain of Mars, but it is actually the domain of the moon. Okay, it represents uh, fevers, any kind of fevers, sleep disorders, menstrual problems as well. All right, so if you are having you know menstrual cramps and other issues, then there could be some problem associated with the moon. Okay. It represents diseases of uh, shoulders and also fear from watery animals. Okay. Uh, next, we come to Mars. So Mars is uh, is the main significator of courage. Okay, it represents valor. It represents aggressiveness, anger, physical strength. You know, it represents pride, arrogance, combat. It represents uh, the skill to use any kind of weapons okay it represents uh, you know it represents sports like archery football cricket okay it represents uh, dominance it represents victory right it represents uh, any kind of police force or army it represents forts okay it also represents cruelty it represents adultery okay this is a very important signification of mars people think that you know mars represents brahmacharya it does but when you know when a planet like Mars get de gets debilitated, it it also represents adultery. Okay, 
it uh, represents all kinds of surgeries any kind of injury okay it represents criticism of others that can hurt you back okay it, it also represents your criticisms that that hurt others it represents uh, weapons like sword axe hatchet the knife okay it uh, also represents uh, the commanders of of uh, of any kind of army okay it represents uh, all sorts of spicy food non vegetarian food basically okay among the seasons it represents summer grishma okay the direction is the south it also represents burns from fire okay it represents uh, the steadfastness of a ruler okay it represents soil land okay it is also known as bhumi karak because mars is said to be the son of the earth okay bhumi putra it represents uh, places which get burnt due to fire it represents any kind of earthenware okay it represents uh, you know the cravings that you have for food okay it also represents the red color okay it represents red clothes red flowers and uh, it also represents gore okay gore is the you know is the gushing of blood that that happens during a surgery or during an accident all right in medical astrology it represents uh, the hemoglobin which is the red pigment in the blood all right it represents the bone marrow it represents uh, you know it represents uh, the cycle of menstruation all right and uh, you know any kind of menstrual problem as i mentioned it's a it's a problem of the moon but mars will also have a role to play in it okay and then it also represents uh, any kind of uh, stitches in uh, in medical science suppose you had an accident and the doctor had to stitch you up okay so that is that is mars okay it represents all kind of surgical operations biliary diseases okay any disorders in the blood they are caused due to mars okay it represents uh, cuts and wounds head injuries as well as you know vitality okay vitality is also due to mars all right so suppose mars gets combust or mars gets debilitated then uh, you would feel out of breath very very quickly you will not be able to work for long hours because then your vitality you know goes for a toss okay then we have mercury it represents education okay it represents the conscious mind all right the calculating conscious mind which is of course you know just uh, maybe 2% of the mind but it actually runs the entire you know the entire uh, play of our lives right it represents knowledge it represents learning it represents uh, scholarship okay it represents grammar it represents uh, astrology okay and uh, the other thing i forgot to mention about mars is is uh, is its representation of logic okay mars represents the logical ability of the native okay so you know in sanskrit the word for logic is tark so you know mars represents the highest logic all right so mercury also represents uh, writing messi ji can you hear me just stop yeah me. yeah laya you went back to mars for yeah i just uh, said that mars also represents logic yeah, no, i got it i got it i just wanted to know at the beginning you mentioned a few things and if you could go over it you said courage valor anger pride arrogance and there was a few other ones in there before you mentioned football and archery okay uh, i said that it represents pride it represents arrogance yeah it represents yeah. your combative ability combative it represents ability. your skill in the use of sharp weapons okay all the risks that you take is because of because of mars so all the risky ventures are also signified by mars okay what what other sports besides archery and football archery football then cricket anything that requires oh, hitting cricket. cricket cricket yeah anything that requires hitting okay because you are hitting the football with your leg right you are hitting a target with archery it also represents shooting okay sharp shooting sharp shooting like target practice you yeah, yeah 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 like gun, guns guns it also represents dominance it represents victory it represents the police the army okay it represents forts it represents adultery it will also represent cruelty okay adultery okay thanks for going back over that yeah thank you yeah 
uh, yeah mercury as i said it represents education knowledge it represents your conscious mind okay it represents learning it represents scholarship it represents grammar astrology writing screenplay script writing okay it represents your oratory skills it represents your speech okay it represents your ability of you know at at having a good conversation okay it also represents power of expression that can happen either through speech or by writing okay it represents uh, artificial languages that means you know the languages that are used by computers okay computer languages basically it represents uh, your ability of you know of discernment your discriminating power of the intelligence okay it represents editorship it represents uh, printers it represents ministers okay it represents forked speech fork speech means it's a conversation having multiple meanings right double meaning talks those are all represented by mercury it represents trade and commerce this is the most common signification okay it represents treasury it represents uh, pilgrimage it represents uh, just like the moon it represents pilgrimage it also represents uh, you know it represents uh, your mental quietude how quiet you can become okay and yeah just a minute there is someone just a minute Yeah, really sorry i had someone at the door uh okay so it represents so, so, so one second so, uh, yeah yeah please for artificial languages you said it's mercury but isn't it rahu also involved uh, in rahu that? will uh, will represent the application of that knowledge okay but okay. any kind of language is mercury all right so because... you mean you mean things like programming languages yeah 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 because they'll have their own own grammar isn't it there is suppose yeah. where you are writing some program in c language or in java language it has its own rules and syntaxes right so that is completely mercury but how you are using it you know you can either use a artificial language to to make a bomb or to to write a program so that is that is rahu so sir somebody who is good or like proficient in uh, programming let's say what will we see what are the factors to see in this case there would be a good relationship between mercury and rahu okay and uh, there would also be a you know if someone is proficient in you know someone has a relationship between rahu and mercury then that person would also be able to teach programming languages so there is no um, link with venus over here uh no no because venus is you know venus has nothing to do with education venus has everything to do with your mantras okay venus has everything to do with your mantras the you know the ability to go on for long hours mantra is basically jupiter but okay. you know some some mantras you have to chant them say for you know for long hours maybe for 3 to 5 hours so that ability to go on and on without you know without getting tired that is venus okay yeah, yeah so uh, it represents the the religious texts okay mercury represents the religious texts because they are written in sanskrit and uh, you know or any other kind of language like hebrew or arabic or whatever so that is also represented by mercury okay it represents friends this is a very important signification of mercury it represents uh, you know it represents your application skills in mantras okay you may know a mantra but then how do you trigger it what is the how do you use a mantra to get certain things okay that is that is mercury okay it also represents yantras right it represents dancing this is another very important factor that people ignore okay dancing is always mercury all right 
it represents a uh, eunox right it represents uh, among the seasons it represents sharad which is autumn it represents your skin okay uh, it represents the northern direction in green color it represents the prince it represents youth okay yeah the the youthful age it represents children it represents maternal uncle maternal grandfather it represents uh, you know a balanced outlook in life okay a balanced perspective in life it also represents the it also represents skill to identify precious gemstones okay so in a you know in a metamorphic way we are all mercury okay because mercury is the bastard child of the moon okay so we are all mercury and uh, we have to you know we have to be we have to develop ourselves to become skilled like jupiter okay when we are born we are all mercury all right so in medical astrology it represents skin okay it represents all kinds of skin diseases it represents navel it represents uh, the sinuses in the nose okay it represents mental aberrations it represents all sorts of nervous breakdown it represents uh, diseases like vertigo and impotence okay because you know if you have an influence of mercury in the 7th house it can uh, you know it can cause impotence of course that is not the only criteria i'm just giving you out uh, you know just giving out a liner here okay it also represents speech disorders okay there are some children who cannot speak after you know after a long time a long time after their birth so that is also a mercurial problem okay all right then we have jupiter so this is the most benefic planet okay and uh, you know it represents uh, your children okay it represents your children and grandchildren it represents uh, disciples okay it represents all sorts of abundance okay it represents your philosophical learnings judicial learnings okay it represents higher education it represents competition okay it represents competition it represents uh, astronomy it also represents astrology right so astrology is the domain of uh, of three planets sun jupiter mercury and k2 not three but four planets okay sun mercury and uh, k2 have the most important role to play but jupiter is definitely very very important because you know it helps you to remember the concepts of astrology okay it represents uh, the the study of dharma okay it represents a uh, grandfather it represents teachers it represents brahmins okay it represents uh, places of pilgrimage it represents wisdom okay so wisdom is something that you know that comes from beyond okay. there is a you know there should not be much confusion between wisdom and uh, and intelligence okay <clears throat> wisdom is something that is beyond your imagination beyond your senses that is the definition of wisdom okay something that comes from beyond your intelligence and beyond your senses okay the sanskrit word for wisdom is pragya okay not much mention has been made about pragya but this is what it is okay something that comes beyond your imagination and beyond your five senses okay it represents uh, the capacity to understand this is very very important isn't it just yeah this is very very important okay it represents your capacity to understand because you know if you don't have an understanding of something it becomes very very difficult to to have a viveka right of what is right what is wrong okay it represents uh, it represents uh, <clears throat> the the mantra the body of the devata in the mantra okay it represents lectures that you hear in colleges and university universities okay it represents the capability to hold people together all right it represents a uh, helpful nature it represents people who follow who follow the law of the land okay it represents a uh, devotion okay because it's a very important factor right bhakti is a very important factor devotion is a very important factor if you have to get closer to the divine okay so it represents a uh, your fats okay it represents fats it represents knowledge of the scriptures okay scriptures are represented by mercury but knowledge of the scriptures is represented by jupiter okay it also represents the ability to understand the mind of others okay it represents uh, all the important celebrations that you have okay whether you whether you call it as a you know the celebration of a marriage or the celebration of a of a birthday 
or the last rites that you you know that you perform the the <clears throat> the feast that happens after the last rites of someone is performed so that is also a celebration okay because it's a celebration that you know that the person has passed on to a higher dimension okay so jupiter represents all sorts of celebrations okay among the stones it will represent a uh, yellow topaz yellow sapphire okay yellow cloth yellow color it represents gold what did you say before yellow uh, yellow topaz okay oh, yeah. yellow topaz it represents gold it also represents uh, honey like the moon okay it represents turmeric <clears throat> it represents cows it represents uh, you know it represents elephants it represents uh, elder brother it represents uh, the northeast direction okay uh, among the among the seasons it represents the early half of winter which is called hemant okay and uh, it also represents uh, spending money on religious activities like you know like sacred deeds or pujas or something okay it also represents charities okay so in medical astrology it represents diseases of liver and gallbladder obesity diabetes is a bit debatable because diabetes is a combination of of venus and jupiter okay but uh, yeah too much of sweetness which is represented by jupiter can actually give you diabetes okay it also represents pancreas and spleen all right it represents diseases of digestive organs it represents uh, your you know it represents uh, trouble in the ear it represents laziness okay because you know jupiter is the is the <clears throat> governing planet of abundance so if you you know if you feel happy without doing anything or without really achieving anything then you become lazy so jupiter represents that laziness okay and jupiter also represents uh, diseases in uh, in the knees okay diseases that happen in the knee then comes venus right so venus represents the spouse okay venus represents the spouse venus represents marriage venus represents uh, all sorts of women right the wife particularly okay the wife and your and your and your <coughs> female partners venus represents the conjugal bliss sexual adventures romantic conversations okay So Venus represents your sexual adventures, right? Your romantic conversations that you have late night with your with your lovers. Okay, it represents uh, love, sports, and water. Okay, it represents uh, indulgence in sex, sexual perversions of all kinds. But <clears throat> sexual perversions have also, you know, they are also represented by Mars. Okay, it represents a uh, romance. It represents, uh, you know, possessing uh, many women. okay it represents beauty youthfulness it also represents uh, fragrances it represents perfumes tenderness okay it represents branded clothes branded shoes it represents uh, you know it represents uh, the favors that you obtain from royalty okay suppose the king is gifting you a piece of land or if gotten something from the government that is also venus it uh, represents uh, you know artificial ornaments or artificial jewelry it represents silver color it represents knowledge of the scriptures just like jupiter because venus is also a guru okay but it gives you knowledge of the world just like jupiter gives you knowledge of divinity venus gives you knowledge of the world and this is very very important okay because if you don't have knowledge of the world you cannot really understand the divine right it represents diamonds it represents uh, all kinds of physical comforts okay it represents fine arts music right it represents dance along with mercury it represents singing as well and uh, the most important representation is uh, is of poetry okay venus also represents the beauty of the eyes right so if someone has venus in the second house that person will have really really beautiful eyes okay and uh, venus the one of the names of venus is sulokchana sulokchana means someone with you know with beautiful eyes okay venus also represents semen okay so the word shukra actually comes from semen okay shuka then it represents all sorts of drama cinema okay it represents a uh, cattle particularly you know the female cattle 
it represents uh, instruments like flute or violin okay it represents uh, it represents your leg shape okay so some people have very well proportioned proportioned limbs okay the leg shapes the legs are very beautifully shaped so that is a representation of venus okay so <clears throat> among the seasons it represents uh, the spring season which is basant okay, it represents out east direction it represents uh, you know it also represents uh, white flowers okay it represents bedroom it represents your bed it represents bed pleasures it represents uh, you know it represents uh, good food okay it represents good food as well as good fortune and it also represents the vaishyas okay who are the you know who are the trading class in a, in the caste system okay so in medical astrology it represents diseases of sexual organs okay it represents diabetes it represents venereal diseases it represents eye diseases okay it represents diseases of the urinary system any kind of intestinal diseases typhoid and all sorts of exhaustion okay because venus represents the ojas okay venus represents the ojas that means your ability to work for long hours that is the reason it rules the second house and the seventh house so if you are getting too exhausted all right then uh, you have a problem with with venus okay and uh, amongst uh, amongst uh, other important representations it also represents lemons okay because lemon is a very you know very ancient remedy used to improve venus okay so if you have a combust venus or if you have an afflicted venus then consuming lemons on a daily basis can actually help to improve your venus okay then we come to saturn so saturn represents sir yeah. uh, one second sorry yeah. can you just go over the um, the representations in the medical terms or not the medical as for venus you say yes yes sir it represents diseases of the sexual organs diseases of the urinary system it represents venereal diseases eye diseases then diseases of the intestine it also represents diabetes along with you know along with jupiter it represents typhoid and it also causes exhaustion and uh, another important disease i have forgotten is appendicitis okay that is also because of venus what was the um what did you say was the direction for jupiter for jupiter it is northeast okay and venus is southeast southeast yeah and mercury mercury is north okay and mars is south right mars is south yeah. okay thank you and sun is um moon is northwest right sun is east and sun is east okay thank you Okay, so next we come to Saturn. So <laughs> people will have a lot of, you know, a lot of questions about Saturn. Anyways, it represents longevity. Okay, it represents sufferings. Saturn is a dukkha. Okay, Saturn is a dukkha. Venus is your sukha. Sukha means happiness. Saturn is a dukkha. Dukkha means misery. Okay, it represents ill health. It represents obstruction. Uh, it represents uh, all sorts of sorrow that you experience. Okay, it represents distress. It represents humiliation. It represents uh, servility okay it represents stupidity okay because saturn is always the last one to know being the last planet it represents all sorts of allegations okay including sexual allegations it represents punishment it represents uh, incarceration right it represents servants separation okay slavery falsehood illiteracy exhaustion it represents uh, indignation ugliness hold on yeah. hold on slavery falsehood illiteracy illiteracy yeah exhaustion it represents exhaustion also exhaustion yeah it represents indignation indignation it represents ugliness it represents uh, the way of dressing in a shabby manner okay it also represents uh, eunuchs just like uh mercury okay it represents uh, all sorts of sins that you perform are you right. saying the equinox yeah yeah it also represents uh you know it represents uh renunciation okay because saturn is the karaka for spirituality okay it represents detachment it represents uh the downward gaze that people give okay if you are too much dominated by saturn people will you know a person who is too much dominated by saturn 
that person will find it very difficult to look up even while walking okay you'll just uh, he or she will just look downwards you know and, uh, walk by looking in a downward direction okay it represents the shudras okay it represents the western direction and uh, <clears throat> just like uh, you know <coughs> jupiter represents uh, you know represents the first half of winter saturn represents the second half of winter which is known as uh, shishira okay it also represents uh, the means of livelihood it also represents old age okay it also represents uh, your debts it also represents your you know it also represents penury okay that means bankruptcy it represents uh, hunters it represents uh, wanderers people who wander from one place to the other it represents buffaloes donkeys it represents dogs okay it represents oil so this is the number one killer for for human beings okay oil it can not only wipe you out financially it can also wipe you out medically oil yeah it is what do you mean wipe you out medically because you know it it just uh, produces vata in the cells okay so if you can manage to give this up this liquid up oil then you are on your way to you know to a very good life okay wait i don't understand it re- it represents oil so oil oil, oil is vata coming oil is vata i mean it it actually it actually kills your cells okay it fills your cells with vata mm-hmm. okay oil is vata coming though like like an oil massage like an apyanga massage that is that is that is an ayurveda i am saying what the oil that you consume okay you don't calm oil by you know you don't calm vata by consuming oil that is a massage is a different thing but oil is unctuous <laughs> <laughs> it's true then it represents the black color it represents iron it represents lead it represents ashes okay it represents uh you know <clears throat> long lasting things okay it represents laborers the labor class okay in medical astrology it represents all the chronic diseases incurable diseases okay it represents uh, your legs feet the tendons it represents uh, you know ugly hair okay it represents lameness it represents mutilated hands and limbs it represents all sorts of amputations it represents this uh, depression this is the most important you know representation of saturn okay it represents insanity it represents idiocy it represents exhaustion okay and also it represents fatigue all right So next we have Rahu. I have a question before yeah. we get into Rahu. Thank you. Um but 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 what what did you say was the most important thing about Saturn? You said or like chronic diseases like streets and you then you said this is the most important. Yeah, yeah, depression, depression. Depression? Yeah, depression. Okay, so I have a question. If somebody Do you know what a cast iron pot is or a cast iron skillet or cast mm. iron frying pan? Mm-hmm. So being that you mentioned iron, so if somebody had a cast iron pot or skillet, is that would that be considered like a remedy to you know balance your Saturn? Uh, the best remedy to balance your Saturn is to you know is to regulate the vata. Okay. So that is the that is the best remedy because at the end of the day saturn is saturn is the silent killer just like you know <clears throat> just like it uh, it uh, fills your cells with vata so once the cells start you know because someone is born and then we know that the person is actually starting his or her journey towards death because the vata is already acting on that person the baby may be growing and then the baby may grow into an adult into a beautiful adult and then at the end of the day we know that the baby will again you know again age and uh, and die okay so you have to understand the sun if you want a remedy for saturn okay i'll come to this part all right i'll come to this part how so, all the how all the planets you know how all the planets are related it seem it may seem that they are you know they are friends or they are enemies but at the end of the day all the planets 
from moon to saturn to rahu and ketu they are all following the agenda of the sun it all depends on what the sun wants them to do okay because you know saturn may be anywhere in your in your horoscope suppose saturn is in the 7th house it is the sun who has ordered saturn to go to the 7th house because he is the king okay so every graha in the horoscope even the sun has its own agenda but every graha in the horoscope is fulfilling the agenda of the sun so i my question though is if someone's cooking with a cast iron skillet would that be would that help balance your saturn ah uh, it would depending on if you are using oil or not okay because at the end of the day all the people all across the world okay i'll not say all across the world but at least in india we are all consuming saturn when we consume oil right because that is something which is very very basic in indian homes oil you may be a very rich person or you may be a poor laborer but oil is consumed by everyone and that is something which actually you know which is actually very very dangerous all right which is very very dangerous because it can not only wipe you out financially it can also cause a lot of diseases okay this is one liquid which causes a lot of diseases sir in okay. that case anyone with a capricorn ascendant or an aquarius ascendant whose saturn is supposed to be the body you know the represent their body or their you know mm. basic being so mm. would that uh, would you say the same thing for them yeah yeah because uh, what happens is <clears throat> no matter what the ascendant is the planet will not lose its natural signification saturn you know saturn is is a malefic okay so even if it is uh, a capricorn ascendant or an aquarius ascendant what happens is that although it will give it will uh, you know it will give a saturnine outlook in the you know in the discrimination power of the individual but saturn will still conf- uh, still uh, influence the vata factor in the body okay so it's not that the ascendant lord cannot be harmful that is a very mis- big misconception okay the ascendant lord can be very harmful because you know if you if your saturn suppose you have you have saturn fourth from the navamsha moon as i had explained in the last class so any food related to saturn will be very very harmful no matter what the ascendant is okay and even if it is a capricorn ascendant or aquarius ascendant although it is a saturn ruled you know these people are ruled by saturn but still all the saturnine things are very very harmful okay there is a reason why planets like saturn and uh, you know and rahu they are called outcasts because they are very anti sun and anti moon okay the sun represents all the desirable things the moon represents all the desirable things saturn on the other hand represents all the undesirable things okay and since oil is signified by saturn this body which is basically the moon okay so moon is always taking a hit and then what happens is that people lose their longevity you know people lose their you know people lose their physical balance so these things happen okay we have to be very very careful in understanding you know how jyotish works in in practical life and this is so important that you know there are the dangers of oil people being made aware of the dangers of oil it is so important but no one is willing to take it up because you know people have not either people have some vested interests or people have not thought on that way but if oil represents saturn and that's something which is going inside our body obviously you know it can harm the body in a multitude of ways right, but devarshi ji the in ayurveda oil is used to balance vata in particular because it's heavy and it's unctuous so- yeah it is it is but that <clears throat> that happens only in the form of some you know some specialized oils it's not a regular oil here i'm speaking about okay. a regular oil okay but okay but then are you speaking about ghee also or is ghee no 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 ghee is ghee is at least better than oil okay ghee is at least better than oil and uh, you know butter is butter is of course again butter is is debatable because you don't get organic butter right and uh, if you look at it okay we actually are putting junk in our bodies okay we it's so funny and so sad at the same time we actually take better care of our vehicles than we take care of our bodies right anyone here who, you know who puts mud in their car no one puts mud in the car right but that is what we are doing with our food choices so wait before you get into the, that you're saying about oil like so are you talking about sunflower oil mustard oil 
Sesame. No, no, any any yeah. sorts of oil, any sort of oil, because all kind of oil is Saturn. Okay. But you do need oil to cook, and like for example, and especially in India, if you're making some dish, oil is the kind of carrier, if you will, that you saute the mustard seeds in, and the turmeric, and the you yeah, know, yeah. We, we, and is, you know that all is the of that is the reason you are, you get born in India. Na. You have to pay for a lot of sins that you have committed. Uh, okay, so, but no, really, I wanna I wanna flesh this out about the oil because it is used in cooking wherever you know. Yeah, even because we have made a habit of using oil. Okay, initially it was not the case, all right, but then because it is cheap. And because it is readily available, so we, you know, we have just made a habit of using it. But there are very good alternatives to oil as well. Okay. Such so, as, such as, such as, you know, purified ghee. Ghee. Okay. okay. So you, organic so butter. You organic butter. So you're not putting a ghee in that category. No, 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 no. I'm not putting it. But it has to be. It has to be organic. Okay. It has to be organic. Not the ghee that you get in the, you know, not the ghee that you get in the in the grocery store. That ghee is obviously very, very harmful. Okay. But the ghee that you can prepare with, uh, with pure cow's milk or that is, you know, that is organic in nature, that ghee is very, very good. Okay. Organic. So even like, like if you look at Italy, also, you know, they have extra virgin olive oil there. Mm. And as a matter of fact, the whole supermarket aisle, the way you might in a, well, it's just all these different olive oils and they have beautiful skin and their health is pretty good over there. Yeah, yeah. Italians are said to have the, you know, the, the most robust health among all the, all the people on the planet. Okay. And that is just an outward, outward appearance, isn't it? If you just look at, you know, if you look and conduct a survey on how people are, on how many people are actually healthy. Okay. We have actually, you know, we've actually confused health with, with having a good figure. A person may be very fat, but no. still maybe in the best of health okay okay so even olive oil you would put in that category. yeah 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 even that is bad even that interesting is bad. okay thank you for spending a few moments on that yeah very just move over to rahul I'll just take a break for a couple of minutes and then i'll come back to rahul okay so <clears throat> should, yeah i just yeah. wanted to i'm closing this oil subject so if people are eating ghee unlike let's say olive oil that we just spoke about which is olive oil for example is really good for the gallbladder and the bile and all of that and plaque and it's been known that ghee has the cholesterol factor so if we're using this based on what we just talked about how does somebody mitigate the you know the you know that other end of ghee um, which isn't Saturn producing, like Vata producing, but it does have that cholesterol potential artery clogging aspect. So I'm sure you can comment on how to use it. And yeah, the thing is that, see, when you, <clears throat> when you use something, okay, the key, it's not only about the food, okay, you also have to regulate your body with, with exercises and with certain, you know, certain practices that will keep the body healthy. Okay, so whatever you say about oil or ghee, that is absolutely true. Those are scientific findings. But what happens is the body is also intelligent enough, you know, if, if given the right direction, if given the right, you know, right molding, the body is intelligent to accept what is, you know, what is right for it and reject what is wrong for it. Okay, so it's not only about food, you know, being healthy is a, is a series of lifestyle changes that you make. Right? You cannot, you know, you cannot have the best of foods, even if it is very healthy. Suppose you have quit oil altogether and you find an alternative which is very, very healthy. And then you don't do anything. You just uh, sit somewhere without doing anything like a, you know, like a couch potato and then expect the body to take care of itself. It's not going to happen that way. Right. I'm not asking that. I'm just asking, is there, if you don't know, that's okay about how to use it cooking wise or right right now there are certain ways to use it of course i mean i it would be you know it would be unfair to 
because that would that would actually amount to a to another class or another discussion if you if all you guys want i can actually help you out with with, with better choices of food that you can make so that is something different okay but you don't there's no specific um, oh, no no it will not be it will not be very specific you have to you know you have to give time to your body and the funny thing is that you can actually go inside your body and ask the body what what the problem is and the body will still respond to you okay if you know how to do it it's very much possible to do it yeah yeah okay? it's very much possible to do it Cheeky. but yeah but this is something that that requires a, a bigger explanation so maybe if everyone agrees then we can have a weekend class on on what food choices you can make okay So uh, coming back to Rahu, okay. So Rahu represents all the sudden, you know, events in your life. Okay, everything that happens suddenly without notice that is the domain of Rahu. Okay, and uh, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> the other thing that Rahu represents is uh, is faulty logic. Okay, just like Mercury, it's just like you know. Logic is very, very essential and, uh, you know, Mars is the character of a logic. So if Rahu is somehow afflicting Mars, then it leads to a faulty logic. Okay. It represents, you know, it represents a flamboyant speech. Okay. It represents, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, irreligious activities, right? It represents adultery. Okay. It represents uh, your hanging out with, with, uh, with male or female prostitutes. Okay, it represents falsehood, it represents wickedness, it represents uh, benefits that you receive from outcasts, okay, it represents foreign travel or residence, it represents uh, long distance travels, it represents, uh, it represents uh, <clears throat> your breeding mechanism, okay, it represents all kinds of hesitations, poisons, okay, it represents uh, all kinds of uh, reptiles, basically, it also represents southwest direction. It represents uh, wandering in difficult terrains, going to the mountains. Okay, it represents maternal grandfather. It represents gambling. Okay, it represents uh, the sky blue color. Okay, any color, any sky blue colored cloth. It represents dark flowers. Okay, <clears throat> it represents, uh, you know, among the gems, it represents gomid. Okay, it uh, represents. Uh, dense forests it represents any kind of sudden disaster okay and in medical astrology it represents diseases of the bones okay insanity hiccups all right phobias leprosy okay it represents wounds which keep on leaking okay there will be you know there will be some wounds that just keep on leaking pus or just keep on leaking blood okay that that is all represented by rahu Okay, it also represents death due to poisoning. It also represents you know, poisoning due to snake bites and also malignant tumors. Okay. <clears throat> then we come to K2. So K2 is the, is the knowledge of the self. Okay, K2 is the knowledge of the self. It represents a renunciation. It represents a knowledge of mantras. Okay, it represents all sorts of tantras. Okay, uh, it represents secret learnings. It represents detachment. It represents the bathing that people undertake in, uh, you know, in holy rivers. Okay, 
it represents a uh, hunger it represents the vows of silence that you take it represents a uh, flag thwaja in sanskrit okay <clears throat> it represents a uh, you know suffering okay it represents a uh, paternal grandfather it represents birds like vultures okay it uh, represents uh, all kinds of sharp weapons okay it represents uh, surgeries and surgical treatments it represents you know thorns stones and it also represents uh, trouble from maternal side okay trouble from your maternal relatives basically so in medical astrology it represents uh, tuberculosis viral diseases eruptive fevers it represents epidemics worm infestations it represents uh, mental instability okay it also represents diseases which cause diagnostic confusion that means the diseases which cannot be diagnosed easily okay or diseases which get wrongly diagnosed so those are all represented by k2 okay now we come to a very important predictive principle which is called the you know the understanding the lagnesh the placement of the lagnesh devesh okay. ji could you just regarding k2 you said knowledge of self and what did you say after that knowledge of self renunciation knowledge of uh, of all kinds of tantras okay renunciation and then you said it represents which grandfather maternal grandfather so sorry 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 paternal grandfather sorry paternal grandfather yeah paternal grandfather you also said that for oh okay so mercury is maternal grandfather and uncle but Correct. you also you also said rahu for maternal grandfather yeah 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 it would be rahu as well okay so paternal grandfather and then you said surgery stones yeah 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 stones and trouble from maternal relatives uh huh okay and you said tb did you say viral or venereal sorry viral viral or venereal viral viral viral, viral epidemics mental instability right and and difficult diagnosed diseases yeah diseases which either get diagnosed very difficult in a very difficult way or after a long period of time or in a wrong way okay uh yeah is that it yeah yeah twinkle ji has asked black magic which craft related to rahu or ketu it is related to rahu okay black magic is always related to rahu okay which craft is always related to rahu but occult is related to mars okay occult is related to mars so there is no good or bad occult all right occult is always gray okay it's a combination of good and bad so you know if you're using it in a bad way it represents that your rahu is very very active right so what do you mean uh, as occult as opposed to um, tantra and mantra like uh occult is a occult is <clears throat> is an application of tantra and mantra okay occult is nothing you know occult is uh, nothing different from tantra and mantra it's the application now you can have a lot of you can know a lot of mantras obviously you know i don't mean by the mantras that you get in books which are available in the railway stations okay mantra has to be given by a guru okay but then there are certain you know there are certain prasiddha mantras like om namah shivaya you do not need a guru to you know to start that but then you have to know how to apply that mantra okay and then tantra is something which which causes which is related to a deep understanding of yourself tantra is not something about about the other person it's about a deep understanding of yourself and once you have that understanding then you try to understand the world around you and then try to modify it as well that is that is the application of tantra okay and occult is a combination of how you are applying mantra and tantra either for you know either for your good or for your bad okay all right so this is a predictive principle i'll be just you know putting it out before we call it a day so the first house as i had said it's very very important and uh, the point being <clears throat> it is known as it is important because it's a, it's a kendra as well as a trikon okay so this placement of the first house all right this
so this uh, placement of the lagnesha okay this placement of the lagnesha is is supreme supremely important to understand how you know how your intelligence is functioning whether your intelligence is going for a toss or whether the person will be intelligent enough to use the available resources okay because bhagya has everything to do with her application of intelligence you may be born as a very you know with, with a lot of resources as a, as a very bhagyavan person but if you, you know if you don't apply your intelligence in a you know you know in a way that that amplifies the whatever resources you have then at the end of the day you will end up losing all the resources okay so <clears throat> How the intelligence is behaving, that is, you know, that is seen by the placement of the first lord. Okay. So we know that the planets, you know, they are a karaka for each of the 12 houses. Okay. That means all the 12 houses have one or more significators or karakas. All right. And uh, a significator is, is what? It is, it is an additional indicator of the functions of a house. Okay. So for the first house, you know, the karaka is sun. So that means the first house is positive. Okay, you have to see which is a you know which is a benefic planet and which is a malefic planet. Okay, so according to the you know according to the significations of those planets, the houses will also become positive or negative. And please keep in mind that I'm giving this out only for the first house, not for the other houses. Okay, so out of the benefic planets, okay, you have sun. All right, you have sun. You have moon, you have uh, Jupiter. Okay, this is this this list is different from you know the original list. Okay, you have sun, you have moon, you have Jupiter, and uh, sun, moon, Jupiter, Mars, and Ketu. These are the benefic planets. Okay, with respect to the first house: sun, moon, Mars, Jupiter, Ketu. All right, these are the benefic planets. The malefic planets are the other ones, okay? Mercury, then uh, Venus, Saturn, and Rahu. All right? So <clears throat> the sun being the karaka of the first house, so the first house is benefic. Jupiter being the karaka of the second house, Jupiter is benefic. Sorry, the second house is benefic. Mars being the karaka of the third house, the third house is benefic. Sorry, Devarshiji, could you go over the second and third, and I have a question about the first. If Mercury has Digbala in the first house, mm. how can it be a malefic for the first house? No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm not. I'm just saying about the Karaka. Don't bring the, the Digbala concept into it, okay? Digbala is something very different, all right? Digbala no, is anywhere, anyways, any, <clears throat> a planet will get Digbala somewhere, but this is just about the, you know, about the, about the first house and how it behaves okay and the first lord how it behaves so but you're talking about the first if i'm if, saying about the first house and the first lord i'm coming to the first lord okay but just understand the houses which houses are malefic and which houses are benefic okay you mean which planets are malefic the malefic the benefics are sun moon mars jupiter and ketu these are the benefics for the first house for the first house no 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 for yeah, with, with, with whatever with whatever principle I'm going to lay out as regards to that principle. So the malefic, the benefics are Sun, Moon, Mars, and uh, Jupiter and Ketu. For the first house. I'm not saying for the first house. I'm just saying that these are the benefic karakas. Okay, these are the in benefic general, karakas. In general. Yeah, in general. With these regards, the with regards to the with regards to the principle, I'm laying it out here. Okay. And then the other ones, the remaining ones, uh, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, and Rahu, they are the malefics. Okay. So the Lagna being, you know, having the Karaka as sun, the first house is the is a malefic, is a benefic house. The second house having Karaka of Jupiter is a benefic house. The third house having Karaka as Mars is benefic. The fourth house having Karaka as Moon is benefic. The fifth house having Karaka as Jupiter is benefic. The sixth house having karaka as saturn is malefic seventh house having the karaka as venus is malefic eighth house having the saturn having the karaka of no having the karaka as saturn is malefic ninth house having the karaka as jupiter is benefic tenth house having the karaka as mercury is malefic 
11th house having the karaka as jupiter is benefic and 12th house having the karaka as saturn is again malefic okay now see which is the first lord okay the first lord as i said you know just classify the first lord as benefic or malefic according to the scheme that i said okay sun moon mars and jupiter okay sun moon mars jupiter these are benefics again uh mercury venus and jupiter and jupiter yeah sun moon mars and jupiter okay sun moon mars and jupiter these are benefics and the malefics are mercury and venus and also k2 right k2 will not give a lordship but yeah k2 is a benefic okay. according to the scheme and rahu is a malefic according to the to this to the scheme as well okay okay thank you now see where this lagna lord is going for example suppose for capricorn lagna Okay, for Capricorn Lagna, the Lagna Lord is Saturn, which is a malefic. And suppose this Lagna Lord goes into the second house, which is a good house or a benefic house, then the intelligence will be impacted. Okay, the person will make wrong decisions. Okay, but suppose this Capricorn Lagna Lord, you know, this Capricorn uh, for Capricorn Lagna, this Saturn is a Lagna Lord, goes into the twelfth house, which is actually malefic. So malefic plus malefic, it's good. Okay, it's mm -hmm. good. Similarly, say the Lagna Lord, the Lagna is of Sagittarius and Jupiter is the Lagna Lord. So it goes into the fifth house. It is actually good. Okay, because it's a benefic house. A benefic planet going into a benefic house is good. But suppose for this Sagittarius ascendant, Jupiter goes into the 10th house, which is a malefic house, then it is bad. That means the intelligence will suffer. Okay, so this is a very important predictive principle that no one talks about, but as you know, as people who are learning Jyotish, you must know. What is the ninth house again? Ninth house is a benefit because Jupiter is the Karaka. Oh, Jupiter is the Karaka for the ninth house? Yeah. So are we saying it's, you're just saying it's a benefic house. You're talking about the house. Right. Okay. 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 As a Karaka. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So, so can you go? Sorry. Does it come from BPS? BPHS? Sorry? Where does is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from the BPHS. Okay, this is okay, from the BPHS. You. Yeah, Anuradha, you were saying something. Yeah, sir. Can you go over that list again, please? Yeah, uh, the first house having Karaka as the sun is benefic. The second house having Karaka as Jupiter is benefic. Third house having Karaka as Mars is benefic. Fourth house having Karaka as moon is benefic. Fifth house having Karaka as Jupiter is benefic. Sixth house having Karaka as Saturn is malefic. Seventh house having Karaka as Venus is malefic. Eighth house malefic. is malefic. Sorry. So Venus in the seventh is a malefic. Venus is a malefic in this scheme, isn't it? So the seventh house, because okay. it has Venus as the Karaka, so this is a malefic. Okay. Eighth house having Saturn as the Karaka is malefic. Ninth house having Jupiter as the Karaka is benefic. 10th house having Mercury as the primary Karaka is malefic. 11th house is benefic because it has Jupiter as Karaka. Again, 12th house is malefic because it has Saturn as Karaka. So it, it's very it? important to understand which is the Lagna Lord and where it is going to see whether the intelligence is being applied in the right direction. So, so let's say, for example, someone who has Cancer as the first house. So right. if his moon is going into the fourth house, so that's a benefic. That means yeah, that is that is a good application of intelligence. But if the moon say goes to the fifth house, uh, it goes say, into the no. If the uh, if the moon say goes into the fifth house, let's say say huh. to the Jupiter's house, so would that that would also be benefic, right? Yeah, because, yeah, because because Jupiter because the fifth okay. house is a good house, right? Okay, so so just I'm trying to understand. So in that case, what you're saying is, say a sun, someone of Leo Lagna, if his sun goes into the, let's say, 10th house. Yeah. That would Tenth be a malefic. That would be a malefic. That means the sun would obviously, the sun is obviously getting Digbala. Okay. Mm -hmm. What happens is, you know, <clears throat> the intelligence of the person would be, would be questionable. What do you mean by this intelligence actually? Intelligence means the ability to discern. Okay, to discriminate. How well are you ability? How well are you discriminating between the right and the wrong? You know, um, is your discrimination? So it's a general. It's a general thing. 
it's not a general thing obviously suppose you take a decision because you know <clears throat> discrimination is also about taking decisions you take a decision and that decision suffers in the long run so obviously intelligence has backfired right i think she means i don't know but you could correct me i think she means this is one application in reviewing intelligence it's not the do all end all of it I because think the point being you know the first house is the intelligence there is no other you know there is no other signification of intelligence right so most of the decisions will go wrong that's what i'm saying so for rahu that's a malefic if that was in a if that was Please. Rahu would be applicable as the Lagna Lord only in case of Aquarius Lagna, isn't it? So for Aquarius Lagna, suppose this Rahu is going to the twelfth house, then it's you know, it's good. Okay. It's no, good. no, wait. Maybe I'm not following. Does it? It could be. What if any Lagna or any, you know, your whatever your Lagna sign is, but Rahu is in a malefic house. So would that be? No, 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 no. This thing is applicable only for the Lagna Lord. Okay, this thing is applicable only for the lagna. Only, oh, only for the lagna lord. Right, right. Acha. Okay, 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 okay. Got it. This is only for your lagna lord. Okay, this is not for anything else. Right. Okay. Can Just I ask a question? Aquarius would only yeah, yeah, be Shannon. for Rahu. Oh, so um, if you're Leo ascendant, then the sun goes to the second house. That would be benefit, right? That would be benefit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Laya, you were saying something. I just, um, yeah, thanks for coming back. I just wanted to make sure. So Rahu would, for what ascendant does that only work for? It works for Aquarius ascendant. For K2, it would be Scorpio ascendant. So for Aquarius, okay, I'm not, I'm not making the connection. Because Aquarius has two pole lords, isn't it? Saturn and Rahu. So the karma is coming from both the grahas. You said for Aquarius, it has two what? Yeah, it has two co-lords. It has two lords. Aquarius has two lords, Saturn and Rahu. Similarly, Scorpio has two lords, Mars and Ketu. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Scorpio has two and Aquarius has two. You're right, right. Okay. Why? Why is that? Why is that? Because you know Rahu and Ketu have been given lordship of those two those two signs. Okay, it has to do with the nakshatras. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the nakshatras, but that is how it is. Okay. <clears throat> what is what is the nakshatra connection? I'll come to it when I do the nakshatras, okay? So I don't <coughs> want to, to go beyond everyone because at the end of the day, the Rashi are derived from the nakshatras. So when you go They're to what? that part of it, the Rashi are always derived from the nakshatras, right? People think that nakshatras are derived yeah, from the Rashi, but it, are... is, it is the other way around. Right, there are nakshatra lords. Sir, in the next class, can we get a few examples of this? Like how, like sample charts where you can give us some examples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will, I'll put it out. I'll put it out. No worry. Okay, so. We come to the end of this class, and I'll just uh, share something. Okay, this is this is something that I that I do every you know every day every every year. So this is something that I teach. Okay, because people do remedies and they don't get results. Why? <clears throat> because the ancestral healing has not been done. Okay. So this is a course on ancestral healing and you know people spend a lot of money they spend a lot of time they spend a lot of energy doing remedies but then the remedies they don't necessarily work because you know if the ancestral healing is not done if the ancestral trauma is there then obviously whatever rituals or whatever remedies you do they don't reach the divine okay they'll just uh, you know they'll just bounce back from the 
from the Bhuloka. Okay, so the ancestors they are residing in the Pitruloka, but if there is trauma, okay, if there is you know if the if there is Pitru dosha in the chart, or if there is some kind of trauma related to the ancestors. Now all trauma is not detectable from the chart as well. Okay, someone does a remedy and the remedy does not work, say in forty-one days. Then, you know, if the person comes back and says that the remedy did not work, it only means that either the person was not sincere or the person has some, you know, some ancestral trauma to, to block that thing from working. Okay. So what I have done is that, you know, I've put out a course, which is called, you know, healing ancestral karma. And this is about, you know, about healing your agama karma. Okay. And this is about healing your agama karma because we have four types of karma, right? So Agama Karma is all about the ancestral karma that we have. So everyone has it, all right? It's not that, you know, only those with Pitru Dosha in the chart or other kinds of, you know, Rahu issues in the chart will have ancestral trauma. Everyone has Agama Karma, so it needs to heal, all right? So this is the foundation work. That means the theoretical part. In lesson one, you, you, know, you have a deep understanding of death as to what happens after death and how you can make your death pleasant, okay? So it's about preparing you for death, okay? And then you can also understand which ancestor of yours actually need help with, you know, with this, with this, okay? Because there are some people who die, but they, you know, they just uh, linger on endlessly, okay? So you can actually help people by, you know, by understanding death. And then you, you try to, will try to understand who are the ancestors and what is your relationship with them. Not everyone is your ancestor, okay? And because, you know, we have a very patriarchal society in the Hindu dharma, that does not mean that the mother lineage is not important. You have two lineages of ancestors. You have your father's lineage as well as your mother's lineage. Okay. Then we come to, to the practical part of it. There is a ritual to initiate contact with your ancestors. This is, again, very, very important because you have to know what your ancestors want from you. Okay. You have to identify them. Right. And then making spontaneous and uh, conscious ancestral contact. So this is, this is, this is practical too or ritual too. Then comes to you know knowing your paternal and maternal lineages. Most people are taught to know, understand only the paternal lineage, but the maternal lineage is also very, very equally important. That can, you know, that can open up a lot of doors for you. Okay. Then you have a ritual to attune to your, you know, to your paternal and maternal lineages. Okay. That means you have to connect to them to understand what they actually want from you. Okay. And suppose there are people who don't know their paternal or maternal lineages, then we have the solution of seeking an ancestral guide who can actually help you to heal the other traumas that are there. Okay. People say that, you know, only 14 generations are important, but it's not that. Okay. All the previous generations, the millions and millions of generations of ancestors that we have had, they are all important. Okay. And if any one of them has not forgiven us for some reason, then, you know, then life can actually be a roller coaster for all of us. Okay, so we have the ancestral forgiveness practice, which can be done every day. And then we have uh, ancestral feasting practice, which is called Pitru Tarpana. Okay, so Pitru Tarpana is, you know, is not done in the usual way that is, that is, that is taught to all of us. Okay, you have to understand why, how, why and how Pitru Tarpana is done. And we also have to interact with the people to whom Tarpana is being given. Okay. And then there are ancestral anniversary practices, which you will be taught and you can practice it on Amavasya, Purnima, Pitrapaksha and Shraddha. So these are the most important days of interacting with the ancestors when they come to, you know, to have things from you. Okay. And finally, this is the core practice of removing ancestral trauma. Okay. So this is the main thing. All right. You may do thousands and thousands of remedies in Jyotish. But if you have ancestral trauma, then what happens is that that trauma will keep on eating up everything that you have accumulated. Okay, any ritual or any remedy or any puja that you do is about, you know, is about getting punyata, okay, getting, you know, uh, receiving uh, spiritual merit, if I could put it that way. But if trauma is there, it will actually eat up all the spiritual merit that you have acquired or that your family has acquired. All right. So it's meant to be a, it's meant to be a, you know, it's meant to be a group session, but uh, I'll not reveal the costs and everything. If anyone is interested, then you're most welcome to reach me out personally. I can, you know, I can share you the brochure where it'll, where it'll contain all the other details regarding the payment options and everything. Okay. Devarshi Ji, when are you going to do it? Uh, this actually happens every month. You can join every month on the, on the day of Magha Nakshatra. Okay. Maga on Maga Nakshatra? Yeah, on Maga Nakshatra. So if you so, want to join. And if is, you it, want to... Um, is it at this time? 
Magha Nakshatra, I think. Uh, what Nakshatra are we running today? I've not seen the Panchang for today. Whatever it is. Uh, so you just uh, have to let me know, you know, five days prior to joining. You can just look at the Panchang and see which Nakshatra is running. Five days prior it's to joining. It's Anuradha today. It's Anuradha. So Magha is... 14, 14 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a few days away. Time. It's a few days away. Okay, Magha is a few days away. So if you want to join, you just have to inform me, you know, five days prior to it. So that you know, you can arrange for the payments and everything. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's how it uh, works. So if you want to join, you are always free to ping me on WhatsApp. Yeah, sir, women allowed? Yeah, yeah, everyone is allowed. No, no, because no, the the thing is because Pitru Tarpan is normally not done by women in our. Uh, oh, that is that is just a misconception. You know. That is just a misconception. And uh, yeah. if your parents are alive, then you don't do it. Like there are two, three. No, days. no, no, no. These are just these. See, the thing is that who are your parents parents are just the ones through whom you have come into this world isn't no, it because women's they go through changes so you know that right entire concept at the end of the there. day you have a very important line you, know, you have a very important lineage you have a very important relationship with your maternal you know maternal lineage okay because even if your gotra changes the material the, if the maternal lineage of yours has not been healed then what happens is that you will face all sorts of trauma Okay, some people they don't they cannot conceive despite having no problems because they have ancestral trauma. Okay, so this is something that that must be done. Okay, and sir. So in case, in case yeah. something, it's in case if I do a picture therapy because I have seen other lineages where they teach picture therapy. Hmm. What I what I need to ask is who am I doing the therapy for? For my uh, lineage, means my or, father and mother's side or my husband and his side? For your husband's maternal side as well as for, for your, you know, for your paternal side, for your father's paternal side. So, okay. So, over here, you mean my husband's side will also get a benefit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, it does, it does. Okay. And Pitru Tarpana okay. is, is not necessary for everyone. If, you know, if the ancestors don't have any grudge for you, then you can just uh, go for this, you know, you can just go for this uh, ancestral anniversary practice and then removing ancestral trauma. Okay. Is this the same as the, the, like the one they do in the, uh, during, um, you know, Mahalaya, that, that same one, are you saying? Uh, Pitru Tarpana is, Pitru Tarpana needs to be done every day, ideally. Okay. So okay. what happens is, you know, what happens on the Amavasya after Mahalaya is the Pitru Paksha, the 14 days of Pitru Paksha. So this is when the gates open up for all the ancestors to come and you know accept offerings from us. Okay. But this is something that is not essential because you know if you don't have if you don't have any you know if you don't have any grudges from the ancestors, then you can directly jump into the, into the removal of ancestral trauma because you know you are not much different from your ancestors. Okay, you are not much different from your parents. We think that we are different, but you know, we are not exactly different. Okay, we still inherit the same, you know, the same, you know, we look the same like them, we behave the same like them. And this comes up as we grow old, you know, as when we are young, we always have a tendency of thinking that we are different from our, our parents and our ancestors, but it is not really the case. Okay, why is that happening? Because you have inherited some kind of trauma from them. Okay, and once you heal that trauma, then your life starts getting back on track. All right. Anyways, this is a very, you know, this is a very yogic course. So if you have the karma of doing it only, then you will, you will be up for it. Otherwise, no, but it is my responsibility to put it up. So that is the reason I have put it up. But uh, yeah, if you want to join, you can join on the Magha Nakshatra day of any month. So that is how it works. Is it one? So every Magha, there will be a lesson and after nine no 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 not every magha if you join this magha then every you know every sunday there would be a, every you know every week there would be a lesson okay i'm sorry could you repeat yeah i'm saying that if you have joined in in magha suppose someone has someone has joined in this magha nakshatra day, on the next magha nakshatra day so you know every sunday we would you know on on the day one we'll have in we'll have an uh, understand uh, we'll have an initiation on understanding death okay and then thereafter, every Sunday, the lessons will follow. Okay, it will be a sixty to ninety minute session on Zoom, and uh, ideally, it is you know it is uh, it is also done one on one. Okay, if you want to do it one on one with me, then you are also most welcome. But generally, what happens is ancestral healing always occurs best in groups. Okay, because of you know you cannot get enlightened alone. 
okay you need a group to get enlightened you need to you need you need a group to to heal your trauma because then you can actually help each other out right okay um i will just share a brief something brief for everyone in the group um that i haven't taken this course but um the seriousness of which devishaji is presenting is very real uh when i lived in india i went for panchakarma ayurveda and i had a vaidya take my pulse he was from a tradition a family of vaidyas of ayurvedic doctors and devarshi ji he he told me after 6 months of seeing me he didn't tell me in the beginning and i lived with the Bra- this brahman ayurvedic family he said after a few times he said you need to go to he said i had this curse he could tell in my pulse and there was a remedy um i had to go to a temple in um at um near badranath and um so i just wanted to speak to you anybody to just share that story so this is yeah time. yeah see <clears throat> curses will always be there okay. there is no perfect there is no perfect horoscope curses will always be there okay but the first step in removing any curse is remove the curse of the ancestors okay because that is something that you have been you know you've been inheriting from one you know from one lifetime to the other and uh, after that you know there is no curse that cannot be handled there is no curse that cannot be removed okay there is no curse at all that cannot be removed so so i'm just unclear oh. about the class is on sunday but maga yeah i'm saying that we start this this rich we start this course every month on maga so if you are joining in the next maga nakshatra day so on that day we'll have a understanding of death okay oh just oh, that one, of first okay the first course yeah and then after we you know even if it if it is if the maga nakshatra day falls on sunday then it's okay if it is if it falls on saturday then from you know the next sunday of joining the course you will get one lesson every day okay. can i ask a question please yeah shana yeah you said something about um if the ancestors don't have any grudge like how how do you know that they they, they will tell you they will tell you i'll teach you how to interact with them. okay okay thank you All right well, then. Well, I hope they don't cuz I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Yeah. Yeah, usually usually what happens is that you know 99% of the population are carrying grudges from the ancestors, okay? That is the reason those things manifest in other people just coming and you know, just coming and uh, being hostile towards you. Okay? So it's really an ancestral grudge that is manifesting in the form of a hostility. All right? Okay. but what if they what if they already communicate to you like no it's it's very much possible it's very much possible okay. it's very much possible and at the yeah. end of the day it's 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 really really wonderful to communicate with your ancestors because then you don't need divine guidance you can only you know you can just be guided by the ancestors right they are very close to you they are closer to you than god okay yeah yeah okay that's how it works okay. because the dna is the same well i do communicate with them somewhat but i need to do that class still Yeah 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 it's 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 something that can be learned of course okay okay all right then uh, thank you so much everyone and uh, i'll see you next week with another edition of this class namaste have a good night om gurave namaha thank you good night good night